I started out running track and field in high school and my track and field coach came up to me and said, hey, why don't you go up and try bobsledding? And I was like, like cool runnings? <laughs> There's another movie, yay. <laughs> That's all I knew about bobsledding. And he said, yeah, so my junior year of high school I went up and I did bobsledding and my senior year I went back and there wasn't a bobsled to be found, but there was a little cookie sheet looking on the ice. You know, <laughs> And he said, hey, come up here. Puts a helmet on my head, puts some lacrosse padding on my shoulders, and he says, okay, lay down and hold on tight. And he kicked me off. I didn't know what it was called. I was young and dumb. So 15 years old, I started doing this crazy sport, uh, and I absolutely have grown to love it. So for the essence of time, I just want to share one of the lessons that I've learned with you guys throughout this whole experience that I've had uh, leading me up to this moment that you guys saw. It's been years and years and years to get to this point. And the one experience I want to share with you guys is when I was, in, in 2005, I was ranked first in the world. I wasn't just first in the US, I was actually expected to finally become an Olympian. This had been a dream of mine, it had been a dream of my husband and myself, and we'd taken out, you know, we were, we were poor college students with loans, and we didn't have any kids at the time, but it had been day in, day out, this focus and this drive to become an Olympian. And um, I was first in the world and expected to win a medal, not just to become an Olympian. I remember going to our Olympic trials. So even though I was ranked that high, I still had to try out for the US team. And after I'd finished going down the track, I sat there with my sled waiting for my teammates to come down on their skeleton sleds. And as we sat there just talking about our runs, one by one they started coming down the track and there's this little dock right at the finish. Right as the ice ends, there's this little dock right here where we'd wait for a truck to come back down, back up, and we'd walk right in with our sleds and they'd take us back up to the top of the track. Well, as we're sitting there waiting, we heard a loud noise coming. And you can kind of tell the difference after you've been around this crazy sport for long enough, the difference between a skeleton sled and a bobsled. A skeleton has a lighter sound to it and a bobsled is really heavy and loud. And I remember at that moment, I turned and I looked towards the finish line, and there was a four-man bobsled coming towards us. We were expecting a skeleton athlete. We were expecting a girl to come down on her sled. And I looked, and I saw this four-man bobsled. Now, that back guy of this 1,500-pound sled that's coming 60, 70 miles an hour at this point, he has the ability to pull up on a lever. And that lever, that lever drags a little claw into the ice, which they can stop pretty quick. But we could see they weren't stopping. And I jumped up to my feet, and there was a staircase to my back. So I couldn't just jump out of the track. There were people in front of me, there were four of my teammates right around me. So I had to take one step to jump out of the way of this staircase. And right when I took that step, the bobsled hit me from behind. I went flying through the air, 25, 30 feet, and I landed hard on the asphalt. And I remember trying to jump up to my feet to see what had just happened. I wanted to know how I just ended up so far away from the track. And as I'm looking around, I can, I can see in the distance, my teammates are running around, there's commotion, there's people screaming. And I tried to jump up to my, to my feet again. I'm trying to see where my sled was. And I could see that my sled was dragging underneath the bobsled. The bobsled had flown off into the, into the road. And the, my sled was underneath it. And I fell back to the ground. And right then I looked down at my leg, and my bones were sticking out. In that split second, my dream had vanished. Before I got to this point, my coach actually had us literally write down our goals and chart our course as to where we wanted to go and how we were going to get there. And I, it was clear, it was a clear picture. I was first in the world, I had so many World Cup races to complete and I would finally achieve this dream of becoming an Olympian. And in a split second, that course was altered. Okay, let's lighten it up. It's kind of early for this gloominess. <laughs> um, so right after, right after I got hit by the bobsled, I had to get into this ambulance, they take me away, obviously they have to set my leg. And I get to the hospital and a doctor comes in and says, okay, well, we need to give you an epidural type thing to numb you from the waist down. Moms, if you know what that is, I'm right there with you. <laughs> if you don't, all natural is good too. <laughs> Shoot me up. Um, so I've got two kids, numb me. 
So I go into surgery. And my doctor says, all right, we're going to have to put a rod into your, a titanium rod into your leg. We have to open up your knee, put a rod down through the middle of it, put some screws in the side. We're going to get this all better. And I said, okay, do what you got to do. So the lesson that I wanted to share with you guys happened just moments after this. I came out of this surgery <laughs> now with the rod in my leg and everything, and I went into my room, and in that moment, when that door shut, that's when it hit me. My Olympic dream was gone. It was gone. My teammates would continue to compete that following day for this Olympic journey. And I was here in a hospital room with staples in my knee, a rod, screws. My Olympic dream was gone. I was ranked first in the world, and it didn't matter. All the workouts I had done throughout the summer, all the financial strain and things that we had to go through as a, as a couple within our marriage being gone for five to six months at a time, in a split second, it was, it, was worth, it was worthless. And in that moment, a tear started coming down my cheek. And my surgeon walked in. And she had a clipboard in her hand. And she looked up at me and she said, why are you crying? That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> what? <laughs> you get hit by Bob so deep, you cry, okay? <laughs> I was like, why are, you, why are you crying? Is what she said. You have two choices. You can either look back and be upset and frustrated and angry at what just happened to you, or you can choose to move forward. What's done is done. Your leg is not going to heal by itself. It's up to you to make that choice. I had always known that we had choices to make, especially as an Olympic athlete. I chose you know, to go for this Olympic dream. I chose to get out, go on with my education. But we always have a choice. Despite our circumstances, despite the problems and the obstacles and the trials that we face, we always have a choice. It was one of the most important lessons that I ever learned. We have a choice to think positively and to move forward and to continue looking towards where we want to go. Or we can choose to look back and be upset and frustrated with our circumstances. I'm going to fast forward four years after this accident. I was, I was not allowed, despite coming back and walking three weeks after my injury, competing five weeks after my, leg, my bones were sticking out, and actually be winning. I was actually the top US competitor going into that 2006 Olympic Games. I finished fifth in the world. But because I had missed two races due to my injury, I didn't get those points, and I was unable to compete in that Olympic Games. It was devastating. Four years later, my husband, by my side, a daughter later, <laughs> she was two years old, at the 2010 Olympic Games, I showed up, and my bobsled teammates told me that morning, they said, OK, Noel, no matter what you do, do not finish fourth. It is the absolute worst place you can finish. You can finish sixth, you can finish 10th, but unless you're in the top three, just do not finish fourth. <laughs> I blame them. <laughs> I missed it by a tenth of a second. One tenth of a second. You can't blink that fast. Trust me, I've tried. <laughs> you can get seven. <laughs> a tenth of a second. And I retired happily. I knew that I had given it my absolute best. As I crossed that finish line, I was able to look into the stands and see my husband holding my daughter. And it was just, it was a moment that I'll remember forever. Four years after that, after that experience finishing fourth, I was able to see, have this moment as I crossed that finish line. I meant it. As I crossed that finish line, all I wanted to do was see my family. Um, and so my girl is six years old, my boy is three years old, and it's just been a journey. And we did it. We really did. And these rings, I'm so grateful for them from O.C. Tanner. I absolutely love them. So this ring, this one is from the 2010 Olympic Games. And when I look at this one, it reminds me to believe in your dreams. All I wanted was to become an Olympian. I wanted it so badly. And it took a lot to get there. And I didn't do it alone. But it reminds me to believe in my dreams. The second one. I'm a little partial to silver. I don't know why, but it just goes with everything. Um, <laughs> this one, this is from the 2014 Olympics. And it reminds me to be resilient. 
Never give up on your dreams. Allow those things that set you back to make you stronger. We always have a choice as to how we want to look at a situation. We can either choose to make it help us you know, be frustrated and upset, or it can boost us forward, and that's what this one did. This middle one, I put it in the middle on purpose, but um, this is the inspiration award for my husband. When he not only built my sled, but he was the one after an 18-week miscarriage that he said, you know, I think if we could do this all together as a family, I know you still love this sport, I know you're still great at it, even though I had it slid in two and a half years. He said, I think that you could be so much better if we could do this together as a family. How about you just get back into training, I'll worry about fundraising and making this happen. I'll build you a new sled, a better one. And he did. He's the one that told me that after I was hit by the bobsled and I wanted to quit, I just wanted to be done. He said, get back out there. You can do it. I know you're stronger than this. And that following year, I came back and I won the world championships by the largest margin in the history of our sport. But he was right by my side all along the way, taking care of the kids as I was stand up top. And I'd hear them screaming and crying, mama, mama. And I'd say, 60 seconds, kids, 60 seconds. <laughs> 60 seconds. And he'd be taking care of them. He's just been an inspiration to me. But this also represents all of those that have been there to help me to get to where I am. Because just as I mentioned, and I brought this to show you guys. Yay. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. This is just, it encompasses every journey, every little step, every experience, every tear, every joy, every happiness, every win, every loss. It's so many things that have gone into this that we did it. And it was never, even though I am the one up there on the screen, there, was, there were thousands of people cheering and clapping and supporting in any and every kind of way. And I'm just so extremely grateful for all those that have been there, OC Tanner, for everybody that has cheered for me, and just so grateful for the experiences that I've had. So thank you for letting me come and share a little bit of my story with you guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And um, thanks again. Thank you.